Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Project Integra. Today, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of what I got right here in this box. Uh, some of you probably might already know if you uh, follow me on Instagram. If you don't, click this link right here. It'll take you right to my Instagram where you'll see everything, what I post beforehand when I make videos. So, what I have here is a Integra Type R spoiler. It's a replica, so it's not the real thing. So, what's oh, everything? All right, so here's my Type R spoiler or Type R wing, whatever you, you guys say nowadays. Um, it's kind of dirty, so what I'm going to do is get some wax grease remover and uh, go all over it with it, and then maybe sand it down to about 800. I'm not going to prime it because it's already the color I want, so there's really no need for primer. I'm just going to give the paint something to bond with, so I'm going to sand that down, make it look all nice and clean, and uh, wait for the paint to show up, and paint it in episode 12. Okay, so now I'm installing it, and I already did the first hole. I actually drilled um, from this side, from the inside out, with a smaller drill bit, so that way I can go down with a bigger drill bit, so that way there's nothing poking out from the top of the hatch. So I'm just gonna poke all the holes out, and then just go in with a bigger drill bit. The drill bit size I'm using for these, this one is a 532 and then you're going to use a quarter inch drill bit um, for the actual the actual screws for the ITR spoiler all right there are the holes the 532 holes there's the first ones then the second ones are over there perfect now we're going to go and use the uh, quarter inch drill bit and we're just going to drill down into the trunk and then we can get ready to fit the spoiler on So as some of you know, I was in an accident a few days ago, on a, actually April 1st, I was, on an, I was in an accident on April 1st, and um, the guy decided to turn left, and I was going straight, and he was supposed to yield to me, because I'm going straight and he's trying to turn left, and he thought that since it was a green light, he could just gun it to the left, and I was completely wrong. It was both our first accident. So, um, basically what ended up happening was I called the police and, uh, they came out, the lady really didn't help, and the dad, his dad came out, my mom came out, and they were just talking, and, uh, basically since the dad was the owner, uh, he ended up, um, talking to me, I didn't really talk to the son after that, he was really apologetic, and I felt really bad because he was really scared, he thought that I was going to be really bad at him. But in the end, I knew that since he was at fault, I knew I was going to get money from it. Nice. I was trying to be as nice as possible to the kid and, and his dad because I knew I knew he was at fault and I knew I was getting money for this. So basically, I went to go get estimates and he said depending on how much it would be, uh, we would uh, go through the insurance or he would cut me a check. And most of you were probably saying, why wouldn't you just get cash? Well, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. He didn't, he acted, the guy acted like he really didn't want to talk to me, uh, voice, face to face, like voices, um, he just wanted to text, and he doesn't want to see me again, I don't, I don't know why, it wasn't my fault, 
Uh, I'm not mad at him. I never was angry at him. Um, so he said he's going to cut me a check. And if it bounces, we're going to have some problems. But everything should check out. The total bill came to $1,062. And right now I'm in my car. It's early in the morning, which is why my face looks a mess. And I'm going to go try to find a new front bumper because um, the aftermarket one's about $100. And I'm not really trying to find... I'm not really trying to pay for a front bumper that's not going to even fit well. So I'm heading to the junkyard right now all the way down Mount Airy. It's about a half an hour away from me. And uh, if they don't have it, I'm going to be a little upset. Uh, they just got an Integra in their yard about five days ago, uh, which is pretty long. So if they don't have the front bumper and I go all the way there for nothing, I may be a little mad. So if they don't have it, I'm probably going to end up just buying the aftermarket one. So. Let's begin the journey to Mount Airy, Crazy Rays. Well guys, today was a successful day. I got my bumper. You don't know how hard it was to get it in this car with that bar back there and these seats. It is ridiculously hard. I had to do a bunch of trial and error and just, I had to take some of the bar off, uh, the bottom one, just to make it fit. Everybody was looking at me strange and I was just like, whatever. I got my bumper for 40 bucks. And then, um, since my, uh, Speedometer is not working. I got just a regular one so I can read real time or real miles per hour instead of kilometers So that'll be helpful too when I'm driving plus I'll be able to tell how many miles I'm doing so I can get an oil change and all that stuff And so everything came to 60 bucks for the bumper and the speedometer. I'm happy I'm going home right now to clean this bumper up. Um, then I'm gonna uh, sand it down I'm going to put Bondo over all the cracks and everything. We're gonna make it look real nice. I'm gonna take the bottom portion off because it's kind of beat up and mine looks a lot better. So I'm just gonna keep my bottom portion, take their top portion, make it look all nice, take all that chip paint away. And then uh, later on in this week or next week, I'll start to paint and uh, hopefully we can get it back on this car. You know, actually I'll probably just paint the whole car or get the whole car ready for paint when I do that. So I'll probably just wait. All right, fast forward a couple hours and I bought the, what the? Anyways, I bought the bumper, like I said, from the junkyard. I uh, just got done washing it down, and I'm just standing it up here to look at all the imperfections, see what I need to do in order to fix this to make it look good. This is kind of a deep crack right here, but nothing but a little Bondi. Got a deep crack right here. Nothing the little Bondo can't help. Uh, this, the paint's just fading right here. There's no big gap right here. Once again, you know. It's just chipping. Uh, the, the sides are pretty much good. This is really smooth, so I honestly don't even need body, uh, Bondo for this. Maybe right here. This side looks good. The eyes look perfect. It's just chipping because paint. This come, came off a of 94, so that one looks good. This one looks good. Top portion looks good. And underneath, um, I took off the bottom trim because, um, well, this one looked kind of bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bottom half and snap it onto here. And uh, then I'll just sand them both down. And then maybe later on I'll just paint it and uh, call it a day. And then I'll probably paint my car after all this is done. If this turns out good, then my car should turn out good, right? So I've never used an orbital sander before, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off in the middle section right here, just do this flat area right here, see how it is with 100 grit. I'm gonna sand it down to 100 grit, and if I need to, I'll go back to the store and get 80 grit because I'm using Bondo, so yeah. We'll see how 100 grit looks. All right, I sanded from 100 to 220, I believe. And this is the end result, and it's super smooth. I, I can't believe I actually did this. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this right now. This is crazy. I've never done a full bumper before by myself. Um, it's never turned out this easy for me. All right, guys. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just I just sanded down to 400 and when I feel it compared to when I first bought this it, it doesn't even feel the same I'm not gonna lie to you this feels smooth as a baby's bottom 
Now, there are a couple imperfections that I just am probably going to skip over. This line right here, if you feel it right here, there's a little indentation. That's okay. I'll live with that. And then, I think there's one other spot. Actually, no, this whole, this whole midsection right here is a little tricky to sand with hand, with, um, by hand. So, I'll probably just, uh, sand that a little better to get all those chips out. And then I'm going to go ahead and prime all of this and see what, what it looks like afterwards. I can't wait to see how good of a job I did because this is my first time doing this and that'd just be great if this turns out just the way I want it to. All right, so here's the first coat. Um, now I'm not gonna actually paint this now today because I don't have a spray gun. I used this rattle can. I know I shouldn't have used a rattle can for a bumper, but I did anyway just to see how it looks. And um, it's not going outside or anything. It's gonna stay in my garage, but I just wanted to see the final outcome of you know, how it would look and this is how it turned out. So I'll kind of zoom in so you guys can see all the imp imperfections that I I missed. Uh, I'm probably going to go back and um, use Bondo if I have to and uh, basically just fill in all of those cracks that I couldn't get to or I couldn't see because of the color but now I can so here's all the imperfections. Um, I kind of got like this fuzzy fuzziness right here kind of fuzzy right there and uh, I think that's because I went down to 100 uh, I don't think I was supposed to do that I was supposed to go down to 180 I believe so that was my fault here's a crack right here actually no that's not a crack I just <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at the camera and not looking at the actual bumper that's actually just I didn't spray everything I just kind of went over one time and didn't really care where I was going I just wanted to cover the area but yeah here's everything down here is where it gets kind of rough all in here is kind of rough uh, so as you can see there's there's that uh, indent I was telling you guys about right there and there you have it the whole bumper completely primed alright so this is day two everything's dry and there's a lot of imperfections I see mainly right here it's like a fuzzy kind of right here this is all fine uh, crack right there so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand it again using uh, 800 I believe and then see if I can fix all this if not well then I have to pretty much start over all right um, I managed to get that fuzzy stuff off by sanding with eight, and uh, yeah, so it looks better now. Uh, there's still a couple cracks here and there. Um, one right here. Let me see if I can zoom in. You got that, that, that that paints I need to fix this right here all inside here is kind of bad except for this strip but it's getting painted black so you'll hardly see it and then you swing around this side this side's flawless so I'm really proud of that side it's like the spots that were really really dented or where it's like kind of showing I'm hoping that when I buy the spray gun and compressor that the paint will kind of act as a filler so you won't see it as much but I really don't think Bondo is necessary because it's it's so minor and it's really hard to see so I'll probably finish sanding that make that look a little nicer this side's starting to chip right here if I have to do that over again and uh, yeah that's pretty much it this is the second coat So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to slap on the lower half and uh, probably stop with the bumper until I get the spray gun, the compressor, and all the paint. And that will be in episode 12. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and take this bumper off. Uh, it just takes 10 millimeter and just a Phillips screwdriver and it will come right off. 
and uh, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. I take that rear lower half off and mount it onto the the other bumper. I also forgot to tell you guys that um, I swapped out the speedometer and that's what it looks like and it works <laughs> that's all that matters I'm not gonna match the miles because last time I did that something happened and it just messed up completely I don't know what I did wrong but it looks all right um, it's weird looking a little bit I also just got my check from the guy and when I opened it up I opened the check up and uh, I was a little nervous because when I opened up the envelope all I saw was a blank piece of paper and I was like, oh, this guy just got me. This guy, he wasn't serious the whole time. He just, he just got me. And then I see the check still sitting in the, the envelope. So yes, he finally sent the check. So now I'm going to go head over to Wells Fargo and uh, see if this uh, goes through. And if it doesn't, we're going to have problems, like I said. So I'm going there now. Um, I had to stop the video today because it started to rain. Uh, so, I'm still in the process of removing my bumper. It's halfway removed and I, I still gotta drive somehow. So, I'm gonna do that. The bumper's primed. After I deposit this, I'm gonna order. I'm gonna order the, the paint, all the paint. And uh, I have to order this, or no, I'm not gonna order. I'm gonna go to Harbor Freight, uh, get the spray gun, uh, get the compressor. And uh, then we can start planning on when we're gonna paint this car. So Friday, uh, there's not going to be a video Friday, just letting you guys all know. There's not going to be a video Friday because Saturday and Sunday is Honda Day. So I might do a follow-up video um, on Honda Day. I might do a video before Honda Day to see if I can meet up with some of you guys and head on up to Honda Day. And uh, so yeah, next pro the next Project Integra video won't be until uh, Monday. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.